Um, good afternoon, everyone. I have the distinctive honor of in introducing our keynote speaker, the Honorable Dr. Lewis Sullivan. Dr. Sullivan has a long and distinguished career in medicine and public service. With the exception of his tenure as Secretary of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services from 1989 to 1993, Dr. Sullivan was president of the Morehouse School of Medicine for more than two decades, developing the Morehouse Medical School program, ensuring medical research was incorporated into education and practice, and providing a launching pad to both transform the health professions and improve care to all Americans. Serving as Secretary of the Health and Human Services from 1989 to 1993, his work at HHS is marked by the introduction of new and improved food labeling, the release of Healthy People 2000, a guide for improved health promotion and disease prevention, education of the public on the dangers of tobacco use, a successful effort to prevent the introduction of Uptown, a non-filtered mentholated cigarette. Inauguration of a $100 million minority male health and injury prevention initiative and improved gender and ethnic diversity in senior positions at HHS. Dr. Sullivan is currently the chairman of the board of the National Health Museum in Atlanta, Georgia, whose goal is to improve the health of Americans by enhancing health literacy and advancing healthy behaviors. He is also chairman of the Sullivan Alliance to Transform America's Health Professions. He has served and continues to serve on a vast number of boards and commissions addressing key public health issues of our day, including HIV, health disparities, public hospitals, and health promotion. Dr. Sullivan's career and work has consistently incorporated data and research to improve delivery of health care at every turn. I cannot imagine a person whose career and life work better exemplifies the use of timely information and data to transform industry, practices, and our nation's well-being. It's with great pleasure that I turn the podium over now to Dr. Lewis Sullivan. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for that very generous introduction. And the brief time I've been here, I have enjoyed um, uh, the discussion, the presentation, and the questions uh, with which all of us are wrestling as we deal with the greater capability we have than ever before of amassing and analyzing and using gra great amounts of, of data. For the use of de-identified information is a topic that has gotten the attention of professionals in medicine and law, among other fields. And this is, was most clearly seen with the case of Sorrell versus IMS Health Incorporated, which was decided in June of this year. It is my belief, one that was ultimately shared by the Supreme Court, that there is a social benefit to be gained with the use of medical de-identified information. In the health sector, there's widespread agreement among practicing physicians, academicians, and policymakers that the ready availability of comprehensive information about the practices and performance of healthcare professionals is vital to identifying the substantial disparities in healthcare in the United States and to improving the quality the affordability and the accessibility of health care. The creation, maintenance, and utilization of statistically robust databases about health care practices and performance requires collaboration among numerous stakeholders in the public and the private sectors and a careful balancing of public and private interests. That is why the federal government and numerous states have adopted policies designed to improve and expand the use of information technology throughout the healthcare system, including technology that facilitates the collection, aggregation, and analysis 
of physician-specific data with appropriate safeguards for patient privacy and confidentiality. Modern electronic information technology makes it possible to collect, aggregate, and analyze unprecedented amount <coughs> amounts of information about healthcare services and practices, including information about provider treatment variations. In 1991, during my tenure as Secretary of Health and Human Services, I appointed the Working Group on Electronic Data Interchange, or WEDI for short, which was co-chaired <coughs> by, by the head of Blue Cross Blue Shield of America and by the president of the Travelers Insurance Company. So this committee was head headed by representatives of the not-for-profit insurance industry and the commercial insurance industry. Their charge was to come up with guidelines for the use of electronic data applications in the nation's healthcare system, leading to the development of the electronic medical record. Their work provided the foundation for the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996, or HIPAA, which regulates the collection, maintenance, use and disclosure of protected health information, including electronic protected health information that identifies individual patients. HIPAA express, expressly does not restrict the use or disclosure of de-identified information, i.e. health information that has been stripped of any patient identifiers. Once individual patient privacy is protected, however, de-identified health information can be collected, aggregated, and analyzed for multiple purposes that are vital to improving the quality, affordability, and the accessibility of health care. These purposes include epidemiological studies, comparisons of costs, quality, or specific outcomes across providers or patients or payers, includes studies of the incidence or prevalence of diseases across populations, areas, or across time, and includes studies of access to care or differing use patterns across populations, areas, or time. De-identified health information is particularly valuable for detecting and measuring variations in the availability and the utilization of health services and understanding how these variations contribute to health disparities that impair quality of life, reduce productivity, and result in premature death in different communities and in different segments of our nation's population. Indeed, such variations in the availability and the utilization of health care and associated disparities in health status are considerable. The National Committee for Quality Assurance, for example, has reported that in, two, in the year 2006, there were between 35,000 and 75,000 avoidable deaths. And the expenditure of between $2.7 billion to $3.7 billion in avoidable health hospital costs that year. This is due to unexplained variations in the quality of care. The need for robust de-identified health information reflecting on the actual delivery of health services is even more important when one considers the country's changing demographics. There's ample evidence of measurable disparities in access to care, the delivery of health services, and differences in health status among the nation's growing ethnic and racial minority populations. Today, our citizens, <coughs> our citizens who are racial and ethnic minorities comprise one-third of our population. And by the year 2042, according to the projections by the U.S. Census Bureau, they will constitute the majority of our citizens. In particular, it has been shown that ethnic and racial minorities tend to suffer disproportionately from the effects of chronic diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, cancer, stroke, and asthma, among others. They also suffer to a greater degree from mental health afflictions and from dental problems. 
conditions that usually are preventable and or treatable with access to and utilization of state-of-the-art health care. With the widespread availability of de-identified health information, it is possible to assess how variations in access to or utilization of health services contribute to ethnic and racial health disparities and develop strategies and techniques to address these disparities. A considerable lag frequently exists between advances in the health sciences and the incorporation of this new knowledge into the system. These lags r result in increased costs in health care as well as losses in productivity and quality of life and an increase in premature deaths. Research sh shows, however, that the collection and use of de-identified health information about physicians' practices can reduce this lag can benefit patients, can improve public health. A National Co Commission on Qu Quality Assurance in its State of the Health Quality 2007 uh, report attributes the use of de-identified health information to a dramatic rise in the percentage of heart attack patients receiving inexpensive beta blocker drugs to prevent second, often fatal, heart attacks. This increased from 62% receiving beta blockers in 1996 to 97% receiving them in the year 2006, saving between 4,400 and 5,600 lives over this six-year period. Further, improving the quality of health of tens of thousands of more, of more individuals. In short, with ready access to comprehensive de-identified health information about physicians' treatment practices, academicians, policymakers, and practi practicing physicians can first see how individual physicians' pr decisions align with patterns of practice across communities and with state-of-the-art health care. Secondly, can engage in evidence-based discussions about how variations in treatments may contribute to systemic health disparities, and three, can develop and adopt cost-effective practices and strategies that reduce or eliminate disparities, that improve the prevention and treatment of chronic illnesses, that enhance quality of life, boost productivity in our society, and prolong lives in each segment of our population. Such transparency in health information ultimately promotes efficiency competition, and cost-effective personalized care, and empowers consumers about provider quality, choices, and prices. Without it, practicing physicians, researchers, and policymakers cannot see how individual practices shape patterns of health care and health outcomes. So it should come as no surprise that the collection and maintenance of comprehensive, de-identified health information is complex, time-consuming, and expensive. Obtaining the data, as well as maintaining and improving its quality, requires participation by individuals and entities from both the public and private sectors, including public health officials, academicians, practicing physicians, health insurers, self-insured employers, pharmacists, health information publishers, and other entities. In order to be useful and reliable for statistical analysis, de-identified health information must first be representative of the entire population across time and geographic area, and without regard to health care provider or payer. 